Skylanders Trap Team is the fourth Skylanders game and the third one created by Activision after they let Vicarious Visions handle the third one. I went in with some optimism about this game because it was made by the people who made the first game. It also seems to have a very controversial stance as a lot of people seem to think it's one of the best and a lot of them seem to think it's one of the worst. Let's see for ourselves. The story this time is that Chaos makes prison go boom and makes these new guys who trapped the bad guys become toys. Then. Oh god, this story is so much more involved. So Buzz, who is new, opens a Skylander Academy. Oh god, I have so much I want to say already, but we'll get a move on. They see someone explode onto the Soda Festival and go get the Skylanders to investigate. This game's everything has a low frame rate again. Mostly noticeable in the cutscenes for me, as they just don't look as smooth as they have in the previous few games. This also does apply to the gameplay, where the frame rate gets inconsistent around halfway through the game and generally has one frame drop per level and in the hub it it's the same thing as more stuff gets added on the frame rate just decreases and this game struggles on the Wii which is unfortunate because it looks better than the previous games the detail is still there quite a bit while looking like this port was actually made for Wii and not downgraded to it a lot of the models especially of the malls or whatever they are wait what happened to Hugo is he is he just dead now Activision, what the hell? You killed my best mole friend. Anyway, yeah, this game feels like it was made for Wii a lot more, but it is just too much for Wii to handle, which I do appreciate. The graphics part, not the bad performance. Wow, I haven't even touched the gameplay yet. The gameplay is exactly the same as the previous games. Wow, but this time you can switch to a villain and get a different type, bonus, and moveset. How do you get these villains? Through traps. The new gimmick traps are... They're fine. I've lost most of them, so I only have this one. Oops. They can look pretty silly, and oh my god, what the- Why is it so much? What? This game is when the prices for toys start to skyrocket a bit. Oh yeah, they also added a light and dark type, but it doesn't really do much, considering I nearly forgot they existed. Now, it isn't too bad currently, but don't you worry. It will get significantly worse. When you defeat a villain in a- boss battle, I wish I could just put air quotes around things I say, we'll touch on them later. If you have a correct trap, you get to trap them and use their moveset for whatever purposes you want. Well, I mean they only have one purpose. I reckon this mechanic's pretty good, the only problem is that some enemies Grave Clubber <coughs> really don't lend themselves to fun gameplay. The attacks can be laggy or have movement to them, which leaves quite a few not very playable for certain encounters. So I just stuck to my little sprout mostly until I didn't. The villains also have a special quest they can perform which is in a random level or the level they are in but earlier in the level. Why is it earlier in the level when you don't even have them yet? That seems like a crappy design choice. Anyway, there are three things that these quests can be. They can just be talk to this guy and thing happens to a reward and oh what the hell is this? Or it can just be a small challenge which the ones I played were capital F FINE. And then, for some reason, some characters just gain a special ability for that stage and it never comes back, which is odd. I don't like those ones. After you complete their quest, they get evolved and now look actively worse. I personally find that the color palettes don't look as good and I feel like they needed to change something, but already had a near perfect palette and they decide to ruin it instead. Of course, this definitely isn't the case, they didn't try to ruin it, but still, I feel like it looks bad. The portal also comes with a speaker built in for the villains to talk to you. Shut up! The final thing about the villains is that unless they are a Doom Raider or a sheep, I don't know why that's the exception, they are just reskins of enemies which is fairly underwhelming. Their boss battle fights are just fighting the regular enemy, but they have a lot more health. It's a bit underwhelming, but it probably was due to time constraints or budget constraints that this was the case, so it's a little bit more forgiving. To move on to the other toys, we have the Trap Masters. They have special crystal weapons, which seem like they like to break since both of mine are broken. Great. In-game, they can break these special little crystals to get some collectibles, and that's it. 
they have less functionality than the giants, which were already not great. However, I'm pretty sure they're stronger than the basic Skylanders without the giants downside. The level 14 series 1 melee has significantly less health than a ranged trap master that came pre-packaged with the game, and it has stronger basic attack. This feels like a way to get more snails, which, while it makes some sense, it's a little bit crappy. Wait a minute, I forgot the most money-hungry reason these guys exist. Is that the only one who can open the elemental gates now? Or what? It was like my least favorite part of these guys, because the previous games like any Skylander open them no problem. Even Swap Force with the dual type gates allowed for any Skylander to open them if you had two players. This is just greedy. Yeah, I know that's why this series is still a series in the first place, but like, this isn't even trying to hide it. The final toys we have are the regular plain old Skylanders, which they're only one of each type because they had to make room for mini Skylanders. I only have mini Root, but there are many more like mini Spyro and mini Snuggle. Oh god, this exists? Yeah, I bought it even though I've already finished the game. Smartest purchase I've ever made. They just seem to be clones of the non-small counterparts. Oh, well, as long as there's a new Snuggles in every game, it'll be fine if they just clone everything. That means the giants still suck, or at least Mini Groot does due to the line's wind-up. Overall, these toys are underwhelming compared to the craziness of Swap Force. To be fair, it would be hard to get on the same level of creativity and coolness, which isn't just Swap Force, but it only applies to the primary attacks or something, like changing the weapon. I feel like it should have been something a bit more, though. The levels will still last a decent amount of time, but I was a lot more actively trying to get most of the collectibles, as most of them aren't in the way. I was also aiming to get all the villains, and I missed one in the only level, which only has one villain. I am a genius. This game also improves on with the jumping from the previous game. How? By making the walls parts of the levels and short enough to jump over. This honestly is so nice, because now they don't have to put invisible walls everywhere to prevent falling off and it going into space where there's no point. But there was just a lot less cuts I could actually find in this game, which is a bit underwhelming, but oh well, it doesn't really affect my enjoyment that much. At least it felt less restrictive. In the story, Chaos has joined you and helps you, and to be honest, I quite like this game's story. It feels a lot more like an arc in like a TV show, and it's kind of cool. It's hard to explain, but that's the best way I can. I think it just felt a lot like each level was less fillery and had a more defined objective. I always felt some progression with the story, which was nice. The true bosses with the Doom Raiders are pretty good for the most part. The first one against Slug Guy wasn't really a boss, but I like how it was a unique way to take one of them down. Dreamcatcher, Chef Pepperjack, Dr. Crankcase, and Chompy Mage were all fairly easy and fun, and Chompy Mage actually felt like he had an appropriate moveset for him and didn't suck. Thank God. God! They definitely had more to their moveset and felt like proper boss battles compared to the regular villains. And most of their arenas were more than just a flat surface to fight on, which helped it feel more like a true boss battle. That being said, if you're unlucky or not quick enough on the Dreamcatcher one in this version, your game will just crash? <laughs> I've only had these games crash once before randomly in Giants, and I have no clue why in either scenario. Apparently, something in the Wii just overloads and just hits bricks after 15 minutes in the Dreamcatcher level. Okay, lies, it happened after like 27 minutes for me, but apparently you need to be quick. Luckily, everything you collect stays collected, so you shouldn't need to worry too much, but it would just be a bit of a hassle to 100% in the level. Wolfgang, who is apparently voiced by a member of Metallica, interestingly enough, is when the boss fights start to derail a bit, but it's not too bad. It's a bit unfortunate because he is probably my favorite Doom Raider out of them all. It might just be the voice, I don't know. His fight isn't isn't bad, it's just not completely clear on what to do for most of his attacks. And the learning curve is quite steep for one of these fights, which is somewhat problematic, especially when you have to replay entire levels over again, which are up to 15 minutes long just to fight a boss. And I generally find that rerunning through levels just to get a boss is not that fun. The Golden Queen is when fights start just getting a bit annoying. Multiple parts of the boss herself is just a pain to hit at all, or have parts that just constantly move, making it frustrating for any melee attackers to actually attack her or these things. I did in the end, but oh god, I lost a lot of Skylanders in the progress. All the Doom Raiders, when trapped, actually have full movesets compared to the two or even one of regular visions, 
which is very nice. It makes them feel more significant. Before we get to the final boss, I'm just gonna cover some extra modes because they are interesting. And also the hub. I don't like the Skylanders Academy that much. I can't exactly tell you why. I think it's just because it's the most used hub and just feels the less significant. Like, the core of light is how you, light is goes to all the Skylands. Flynn's ship was something unique. Woodborough was something unique. But Skylanders Academy, I think just the concept is kind of not great. And I just feel like it's too big. I think I'm not entirely sure why I dislike it. That's the best explanation I can get. Anyway, first extra mode is BTD6. I mean, Chaos's Doom Challenge. It's a tower defense mode where the tutorial is absolutely horrible, but the other levels aren't too bad. You can construct towers if you have a Skylander of the correct type, and it's pretty okay. You've also got Arena again, which each level has a special condition that you need to complete, and it's pretty okay. Finally, the greatest mode in this game, Skeleton Showdown. Have a guess what it is. Did you guess a pretty good rhythm game? Yeah, it's really odd and and kind of good. My favorite one is when you unlock, is the first one you unlock with Arbo. It's got a very, I don't know how to explain it, but sort of just voice clips repeating. It's hard to explain. These can actually get pretty hard and they're not horrible to listen to. <laughs> Honestly, a shock to me. <laughs> and one last thing, because I nearly forgot it. Sky Stones. They didn't exist in Swap Force, interestingly enough. This time, it's more like a Hearthstone-based combat system, where you've got three different slots to place your stones, and they can attack, defend, all well, those are their two stats. Or sometimes they have a special ability. I think it's quite fun, but overall, I, it's just too simple due to the lack of stones you can actually have in one deck and how easy it is to win. I think it is probably better than the other one, just because I prefer the style. <laughs> anyway, after you kill the Golden Queen, Chaos betrays you. Whoa, I couldn't just walk left or go into the Villain Vault and see he was a boss. Whoa. Anyway, he goes into the Doom Raiders machine that I haven't mentioned because I've sort of been ignoring the story. Oops and becomes purpleized. Sure. Anyway, the level's about the same as most of the levels in this game, which is pretty decent. An interesting thing that happens is when Chaos just breaks the fourth wall. Is this just gonna become a current occurrence for the rest of this series? He talks to you through the portal. Stop me. Why are you Shut now? up! And he also makes your remote vibrate. After the level only, I've been Chaos by running up this lift. Nice. Anyway, Trap Team boss battle is the worst in this series so far. I'd rather fight evil Glumshanks 10 times before this boss once. The first and second phases are mostly okay, but the third phase is genuinely horrible though. You have barely any time to actually be able to get in and properly attack Chaos due to how many shockwaves there are for his main attack, making it so that you're more likely to run away from him, which causes you not to be able to get to him because he goes away before the actual shockwaves dissipate and his hitbox feels way smaller than it should be, making it difficult for ranged attackers to actually hit him accurately. I decided to play as Snuggles for a couple bosses and he just could not hit him because of how small the projectiles were. He killed so many Skylanders due to this and the fact he hits harder than a semi-truck carrying a meteor, going at a million miles per hour. That's not funny. <laughs> and his final phase is incredibly long and it's so discouraging after you see him get down to a third's health and then heal back up to half. It was like 50% of this 25 minute fight due to the struggle of just hitting the guy. It wasn't like the hitbox or health was consistently depleting, which was the annoying part. The villains are your best friend during this fight because they don't actually have a, their own health bar and can't die but they've got a timer. Use them liberally and bring one that has an actual ranged attack. Golden Queen is an okay one to bring, but I would not su I would suggest someone else, preferably. After you defeat Chaos, you can trap him in his very own trap, which is the worst value in any of these toys. That's kind of cool, you get to play as Chaos. His moveset kind of sucks though, so... <laughs> or it's, it's not bad, but for any of the extra modes, it kind of is bad. 
Afterwards, Skylines is safe, blah blah blah. Overall, this game would be the best game in this series if it was the HD version. A lot of the stuttering for the Wii version just makes it so that I just can't rate it over the first one, as it did definitely harm my experience a bit. Which is disappointing, because there's a lot more about the game I want to talk about. I also forgot to mention more of the glitches and stuff, like not opening this present, whoops. If you can find a non Wii version, I would definitely suggest picking up this game more than Spyro's. If you want like a shorter experience, Spyro's, but if you want a better experience, Trap Team. I would highly recommend it as, yeah, it's definitely the best experience I've covered so far. I have no joke to end this on, oh god.